Good morning. It is Saturday the 5th of January and the weather forecast this morning or today should I say is looking quite variable, some sunny spells with plenty of cloud but I've decided to get up early and head to a location which has been on my bucket list for several years now. It's situated just beside the, the town of Stonehaven which is south of Aberdeen and it's probably one of the most iconic castles in the whole of Scotland. If you haven't guessed where I'm going yet, I'm sure you will recognise it the moment that I get there. Welcome to the Notter Castle in Aberdeenshire. So, it would have been very naive of me to think that I'd get this place to myself this morning. After all, it is a Saturday, the sun rises pretty late, so it's more accessible to people at this time of day. And we're not far from Aberdeen, so the population density here is pretty much, well, quite a bit higher than a lot of the places I normally shoot. But when I arrived this morning, the car park, there was about well, there was quite a lot of cars here, which I was very, very surprised about. And coming now and going on the walk around the castle, there are so many photographers dotted around this coastline. Like, they're everywhere, which is great to see, obviously. I love get, seeing people getting out with their camera and enjoying the beauty of Scotland, especially early in the morning. But it's making me finding a composition and feeling comfortable vlogging very, very difficult. The thing I love most about landscape photography is getting out into the solitude of nature and not having too many other people around me. So to come here this morning and see so many people, <laughs> it's quite daunting for me. It's almost a new experience. As I say though, it's very, very great to see so many people out with their camera. The weather is not as good as I'd hoped. It's very overcast. To be fair, when I looked at the forecast again this morning, it had changed a bit from last night and it's not meant to get sunny now until about 10 o'clock, which, which is a shame. But I'm hoping if I travel around the coast a little bit more, away from a lot of the other photographers, just to try and get a more unique image and obviously not bother them, I'm hoping I might be able to get a long exposure image of the castle from a distance. Although there's pretty much no wind this morning and as a result, the sea is flat calm, as you can probably see. And as it's so overcast and not windy, the clouds aren't gonna be moving either. So long exposure may not work this morning, but I'm gonna continue my walk and see what I discover further around. I'm sure you can see why this location is so popular with photographers. It's got that ancient feel to it, the beautiful castle on the rugged coastline. And this castle has got so much history involved with it. In fact, last night I did a little bit of research for coming here because it's somewhere that you see so many photographers coming to and so many, many people coming to explore when they come to Scotland. And many of you, when I asked last year where you'd like me to shoot, a lot of you mentioned Dunotter Castle. So I wanted to learn a little bit more about it. And I discovered that it was originally built in 1392 and it's a medieval castle that has seen so many different things happen here. It's been visited by several saints and queens. And when it was initially built, it was a Pictish fort, which I think is very interesting because I was brought up in the Pictish capital of Scotland in Burghead on the Murray Coast. So to know that this was originally a Pictish fort, I think is very interesting. And this rock that it's been, that it was built on is 440 million years old. So it's, in many ways, I find that so fascinating to think how old this rock is. It is like you're being transported back in time, which I'm sure, you know, is what a lot of castles make you feel. But this one more so because it's so ancient, unbelievably ancient, and the history that surrounds it is really, really interesting. And I've never been in this castle, but it opens at 10 o'clock today. It's £7 to get in, and I'm thinking it might be a good idea to go in it, do a bit of exploring, learn as much about it as I can, so that when I come back here, hopefully in the future, to do more photography, it means more to me because I know the story and I've seen the ins and outs of it. So that's what I'm going to do later on this morning, but, but before then I'm going to try and get some images. And it's a, not the castle itself that's interesting me this morning. There is 
some rocks here which look beautiful because the sea this morning as I said earlier is so calm and it's very very bluey green and these rocks just just they just look beautiful so I'm going to get my camera out and snap them the tide is out quite far this morning which is why the castle's not looking too great it would have been nice to have had the water further in just to give it a, a much more interesting image but because there's so many rocks on the beach it's just quite messy but there's definitely photography opportunities to be had here this morning so let's stop talking and get on with the photography So I sat at my camera here, unfortunately the ground is quite springy with the grass so I'm trying to stand away from it while the image is being taken. But what I've done is I put my polarising filter on to get rid of the glare and I've also put my Lee Little Stopper on which has given me an exposure of 25 seconds. And what I've done is I focused on these rocks at the end as I explained earlier because Although the castle's obviously beautiful, we haven't got that light this morning, so we've not got any light hitting the castle to make it stand out, to make it 3D. So what I'm trying to make the most of here, and what is enticing me the most here, is the colour of the water. Now I worked in this part of Scotland quite a lot over June last year. I actually worked over there on a nature reserve called Fellshue, which is stunning. The cliffs there are beautiful, and in the summer it is completely filled with seabirds. But I was always blown away by the colour of the sea at this part of Scotland. Scotland. You often hear of people talking about the blueness of the sea on the west coast but here it's this greeny turquoise colour and it is just, it's mind-blowing and I knew it was beautiful when it's sunny but to come here in an overcast morning and to still see it in this colour, it's just, it's beautiful. So I'm trying to focus on that this morning because that is what is enticing me in and what is making this location look so mystical and so magical. So I have put a little bit of the, the castle on the end of it but I'm just trying to show this castle or the end of the castle on this rocky outcrop, this pinnacle, a long exposure image. So I'm just trying to showcase the beauty and simplicity of this image and this location. So I'm not sure, although it's the colour that's enticing me in, I may convert this image to black and white, but probably not because I want to show that beautiful colour. But I'm just trying to make the most of the conditions this morning, show off how beautiful it is and how still the sea is because as I say that is what is enticing me this morning, not the castle. And I, I want to say to you that if you do come to a location with a specific image in mind or to photograph a specific thing, often you will go home disappointed because often that thing that you've come to photograph, the conditions won't always be the way you want them to be. So you've got to look for things or other things around that image and that composition to photograph because often Often the best photographs you get are when you adapt to the conditions that you find when you get to a location and that is exactly what I've done this morning. I'm adapting to the conditions and photographing what is going to look best in the light conditions that we've got. Just a bit of advice there for you. If you start looking around you at different things which you may not have thought of photographing, that is when your photography improves and that is when you get the best images and when you're less likely to go home feeling disappointed. So another quick tip, I always forget to do this because I forget this tripod's got it, but because the ground is bouncy and for some reason the wind is now picking up, I've used my camera bag to weight it down to try and stop it from moving and, and blooding the image. just packed my camera gear away and started walking a bit further around the, the cliffs but I've come across this here and I'm really liking it because as it's so calm there's just some little swirls of, of white water 
around two of the ends of this rock and I think it would make for a great long exposure image similar to what I did here a minute ago but a more intimate one again something a bit different and you know I've really noticed recently in my photography that I'm really starting to look at things which I would never have looked at in the past or I maybe would have looked at them but not thought to photograph them and this this morning this bit here proves that to me because as I said, I came here to shoot the castle, but the castle isn't what, what's looking good this morning. What is looking good this morning is the water. And I guess it shows how much I've, in, I've developed as a landscape photographer over the past year. And through learning as much as I can off of YouTube and through getting out into the field and learning to read the light. And this is something, I know I keep banging on about my workshops, but they're now up and live and you can book yourself onto them as you will have seen the advert the other day. But this is something that I will be teaching in my workshops, is how to read your location based on the weather conditions and the light that you find there. Because while I may say we're going to photograph this specific location, it's a whole location, it's not a specific monument or a specific statue. It's about looking around that location for different photo opportunities which you may never have thought about before. Reading the, <laughs> reading the location in a new light, seeing this country in a new light. That is what it's all about and that is what my teaching style is all about and I hope that you will all grasp that and you will all come along on the journey with me because I'm, just, I'm so excited for these workshops and I'm really really sorry to keep banging on about them. Anyway let's get back to the photography. Let's get my camera gear out again and I'm gonna shoot this and hopefully it'll look as good on camera as what I imagined it to look in my mind's eye. So one thing that I thought would be really nice to do before I, I head off and get some breakfast before exploring the castle is to sit by the edge of the cliff, not too close of course because it's dangerous, but sit near the edge of the cliff overlooking the castle and get a nice selfie image of me enjoying this view. Because it's got to be one of the most iconic views in the northeast of Scotland and one well worth enjoying. So that's the end of another vlog. I just want to say a huge thank you for all your love, support and time. I hope you've enjoyed this video and it's given you something to think about next time you're out shooting an iconic location. I'm off back to the car to have some breakfast and warm up a little bit before I start my inside tour of the Notter Castle. So tune in next time to see how I get on. As always, thank you all again for watching and I'll see you all again next time. I've not even made it to the ticket desk yet and I'm already in this dungeon enclosure. I'm still in awe.